Hi everyone, I'm Dr. White with Integra Health here in Temecula, California. I am a board certified pulmonologist, critical care, and sleep medicine specialist. Today, I'd like to talk with you about ARDS and specifically ARDS due to COVID-19 pneumonia. My topics for this discussion will include a basic overview of ARDS, the effects of COVID pneumonia on the body, and the approach our doctors here at Integra Health are using to create a treatment plan for patients affected by COVID. Adult respiratory distress syndrome is a dangerous, potentially fatal, respiratory condition in which the lungs sustain a serious widespread injury that diminishes their ability to provide the body's organs with enough oxygen. Let's start our discussion by explaining how the lungs work. The main function of the lungs is to exchange oxygen in and carbon dioxide out of your body. The lungs are made up of tiny air sacs called alveoli. When you take a breath in, the air sacs fill with oxygen, which then gets absorbed into the bloodstream and delivered to the rest of your body. In exchange, carbon dioxide produced in your body gets dumped into the air sacs from the blood and exhaled through the airway. ARDS is caused by an injury to the lungs, whether from illness or direct injury, and this injury causes diffuse inflammation in both of your lungs damaging the alveoli and neighboring blood vessels. The inflammation causes fluid to leak into the spaces between the capillaries and the alveoli, ultimately seeping into the air sac. This is what gives ARDS its characteristic trait. Accumulation of fluid in the lungs, taking up space where oxygen should be. This leads to a series of cascading problems, each further decreasing the lungs' capacity to move oxygen into the blood directly impacting the body's tissues and organs. In addition, ARDS also triggers an immune response, resulting in sepsis, which essentially is an inflammation throughout the body. This inflammation, in combination with low levels of blood oxygen, can sometimes lead to multiple organ failure, usually is the main cause for death for ARDS patients. Some conditions that cause direct lung injuries are pneumonia, aspiration, inhalation of toxic substances, bruising of the lungs caused by chest trauma, or viral infection of the lungs, including COVID-19 infection. So now, let's talk about COVID and its effect on the body. When the coronavirus enters the body, it frequently attaches to cells in the upper airway. This sets off an immune response that causes inflammation leading to symptoms such as cough, sore throat, and fever. In some cases, the virus travels beyond the upper airway, moves through the lungs, and end up in the alveoli. When this occurs, COVID-19 can lead to ARDS, typically setting in about eight days after the onset of initial symptoms. Certain risk factors increases the likelihood of the development of ARDS in patients with COVID pneumonia, including advanced age, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Once the patient develops ARDS, the risk for mortality significantly increases, and thus it is very important to recognize and quickly diagnose this condition. The four criteria for the diagnosis of ARDS include number one, acute lung injury, number two, bilateral infiltrates on a chest imaging, number three, hypoxemia or low blood oxygen, and lastly, the pulmonary edema cannot be caused by a cardiac contribution. ARDS is a serious condition. Even with treatment, about 25 to 40 percent of ARDS patients do not survive. While the mortality rate for ARDS is significant, recent advances in treatment have significantly increased the chances of survival and recovery. Patients who survive ARDS typically require some form of physical therapy to rebuild muscle tone. Most people who survive ARDS go on to recover their normal or close to normal lung function within six months to a year. Others may not do as well, particularly if their illness was caused by severe lung damage or their treatment entailed long-term use of a ventilator. They may have reduced lung function that can affect daily routine and activities. 
So let's now talk about treatment we are using outpatient to manage patients with lung injury from COVID-19. Here at Integra Health, we recognize the gravity of possible long-term effects of COVID on the lungs. In fact, we're currently managing quite a few COVID patients here at our clinic, and I'd like to share an interesting case with you. This case is of a patient that I've been treating for asthma, and here's the PFT prior to the patient getting COVID. As you can see, the FEV1 on this PFT is 82%, which is normal. FEV1 is the amount of air that you can force from your lungs in one second. It is generally used to grade the severity of a lung disease, where lower FEV1 scores indicate more severe stages of the lung disease. Thus, essentially, it rates your lung health. Here is a spirometry that was done on the patient's first follow-up visit with me two weeks after the patient was diagnosed with COVID. As you can see, the FEV1 went down to 52%, the lowest value we've seen for that patient since being with us. After about three months of treatment, we repeated the PFT and the FEV1 is now back up to 76%. Not quite yet back to the patient's normal baseline, but certainly a dramatic improvement. Knowing how COVID can impact a person's lung health, we take steps to measure and assess your lung health immediately post-infection and continue frequent ongoing monitoring. This include getting a pulmonary function test to assess your lung capacity and chest imaging to evaluate the health of your lung tissues. If you've had low oxygen during the course of the disease, we perform a six minute walk test to assess for the need for supplemental oxygen and also an overnight pulse oximeter to ensure adequacy of oxygen during sleep. Depending on the clinical scenario, we may also obtain additional tests to look for things like blood clots that could occur in the lungs or recommend bronchoscopy to further assess the damage to the lungs. In regards to treatment, we combine evidence-based medicine with experiences we've gathered from the large amount of patients we've treated in and out of the hospital and come up with individualized treatment plan tailored to each specific patient. We use medications to help improve and maintain lung capacity medications to help with any residual inflammation, and medications to help with symptoms such as cough, sputum production, that may linger after COVID infection. We also enroll patients in pulmonary rehab programs that are customized specifically for patients recovering from COVID. For patients with more advanced disease, continual monitoring is indicated with serial spirometries or PFTs. Thus, if you or your loved ones have been affected by COVID-19 and would like to assess your lung health after the infection, contact us here at Integra Health for an evaluation with one of our lung specialists. Visit us at IntegraHealthPC.com to learn more.